What's up guys? Pushing out a video about my experiences with the uh excuse me, um the Black Magic of Ariman Grimoire, written by Curtis Joseph, published by Become a Living God. One of the best grimoires out here to date dealing with Persian black magic. Now I haven't come across many grimoires that deal with Persian black magic unless you're dealing with some of the the jinn and you know uh separate div entities as far as you know just not put into one one grimoire one tome so curtis he he did his research man he did his research the the grimoire is very informative very well put together um and is very practical you know um as he stated giving an interview with uh ea um back when the grimoire was first published you know he stated and he said like you know you you, you can do this work for lifetimes and lifetimes over and he's right you know from what i from what i've experienced you can always find something to do out of the grimoire itself working and working and working to find deeper aspects of yourself deeper aspects of your mind to open these parts of yourself up and to really express and shine you know but in the grimoire he talks about uh Zoroastrianism and how Zoroastrianism led by Ahura Mazda is a system of spiritual slavery you know and and he bases it around humanity which you know my my ideal and my ideas is if you're picking up grimoires and stuff like that you're not dealing with it from a human perspective right so you want to get rid of that shit you want to basically deal with it from a god level and so um you know he gives it he gives a basic terminology so that people that are aren't on that level quite yet to understand their own god self they can look at it from a humanistic view anyway so he goes in and he talks about uh spiritual slavery from you know from a zoroastrianism point of view and how this religion was set up to basically usurp the power of those who who had followed the darker path, the darker path, which he calls the path of smoke, and were able to to open up these aspects of themselves through the many emanations of Angra Mayu Ariman in the forms of divs, and how these religious systems basically uh, uh, guided and led the power towards Ahura Mazda to keep this matrix going, basically. And so uh, he goes in, he breaks it down, uh, gives a good overview of why why this has happened, you know, in what ways you can you can break free from it, and to utilize the power. Now he he basically states that this is a strike against God, and you know, looking at it from a, a perspective of what God means. He's talking nothing more about than the Demiurge, right? So the strike against the Demiurge is what we're doing, what we're dealing with here. The Demiurge, obviously, is the false creator God, the abortion of, of the Divine Mother, uh, who basically fucked up everything and who tried to replicate everything from what he's seen from above. And so um, when he says that you're, 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 setting a strike against God, you're, you're setting a strike against not only the Demiurge, but what the Demiurge represents. The Demiurge is nothing more than your own conscious mind that's keeping this matrix going, okay? Your Demiurge energies, which is in everybody and everything, if you're here in the physical plane, uh, basically is, is, is here to keep things going, keep the physical matrix going. And so when you set up a strike against the Demiurge, when you set up a strike against God, what you're doing is you're destroying the matrix. You're destroying the matrix as you perceive it, as you see fit, as you know it to be. And so uh, what Curtis does is he goes through and he gives you techniques, very powerful techniques. Now, what I suggest for any person that's dealing with this work to do is to go through and utilize every single technique, every single meditation, every single in incantation that he has in the book, including, you know, getting the animals, you know, and, and doing the different things that, that he tells you to do with it. Do it because it's essential for the work. 
It's essential for the work. Without dealing without dealing with those aspects of the work themselves, with the work itself, uh, you're missing out on a very vital aspect of, of the work itself. So follow each and every single step to a T if you can. Now, if obviously, if you're dealing with the work and your spirit and your intuition, your, 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 your soul tells you to do something different, to change up the work, change it up. But it's very important that you listen, that you read the book and you listen to him as, as he tells you to do it. At least, at least until you get a foundation and then you can kind of, you know, go off from there, you know, follow your own path. Now, with dealing with Angra Mayu and the Dibs, you're dealing with the most divine aspect of self. The most divine, the most darkest divine aspect of self. So what you're doing is you're challenging your own conscious mind, your own conscious reality, your own matrix, and you're destroying it. You're literally destroying, you're literally tearing it apart and you're bringing all this divine energy back into yourself as one guided source. And you're becoming divine darkness once again. You're becoming divine darkness once again. You learn a lot about the divs. The divs are nothing more than the aspects of the divine darkness that, that are represented. So you could say that is is nothing more than demonic entities that are, are projected for it, right? That are projected for it from your own conscious mind, your own soul, your own your own divine light, so to speak. And so what Curtis does, he gives you different techniques to deal with the self. Now, one thing I do suggest is that when you're dealing with this work, a lot of a lot of distractions, a lot of things that you've held on to when it comes down to your humanity will come up to the surface and you will have to destroy them. You will have to dissolve them. You will have to get past them. You will have to devour those things and bring that energy back into yourself to face yourself, you know, to face Angra Mayu. And Angra Mayu is nothing more than a shadow aspect of yourself, right? He talks about how Angra Mayu and, and Ahura Mazda are two different entities. Um, not Two different not two sides of the same coin yes and no yes and no they're t they are two different entities you have one that's a divine light aspect and one is a divine dark aspect but they are dealing with the same divine source energy but they are separate from each other but they are both the same because they're both of the same energy you know what I mean so it goes both ways it goes both ways so what you're doing is when you're challenging this form of false light the world around you begins to, to, to take shape shift mold destroy fold in on itself and you're literally seeing how this world is it's is crazy in, in and of itself and how it's set up for uh, subjugation for domination for suppression of your most divine mind and you notice it and when you notice it Shit becomes crazy, man. Shit becomes crazy. You become awakened. You start to notice these things. So the best thing to do is just to continue to move forward, to move, to move forth, um, through the work. Now, when you're doing all the techniques like the Kundalini Yoga, the breathing techniques, and stuff like that, you're empowering your most divine self. And in the process, what you're doing is you're feeding the divine darkness. Now, as you're feeding the divine darkness, keep in mind, folks, that as you're doing this, that aspect of your humanity, that aspect of your conscious mind and ego will fight back. <laughs> it will fight back and it will fight back hard. But you still have to just push through it. You know, you're going to have days to where you're tired. You're, uh, you're not going to have any money. You're going to run out of money. <laughs> you're going to be like uh, alone. You might feel like you're going crazy. You might feel like, shit, man, the whole world is against me. Which, I mean, if those things come up, 10 times out of 10, those are things that have been deeply embedded in your own uh, uh, subconscious mind. And so you have to push through those things anyway to, to get over them, to kind of work through those things. Because those things have become nothing more than um, distractions from your, your most divine purpose. But as you're working through the grimoire itself and as you're working through working with Angra Mayu and Ash Jahi and all the divs and stuff, and um, you're going through Arizura, 
you're realizing that uh, uh, your most divine purpose is being revealed to you as you do the work. You know, and and it, it can become scary. It can become scary at points because you're like, shit, what do I do now? Because I don't, I don't know. And so you go through a dark night of the soul with this this grimoire. It initiates a dark night of the soul. And so that's what you want. You want to initiate the dark night of the soul because that's the awakening. That's the awakening. That's what you need right there. That's what you need to push yourself through and get and get to the next point. And so uh, as you as you work through the 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 different techniques and stuff like that you know he he gives you a chance to kind of work from two different angles one angle of alchemy where you're doing self-transformation and one angle of sorcery to where you're actually doing you know physical you know mundane actions now i'm gonna tell you those mundane actions most likely will be needed <laughs> so uh be prepared to to throw down sometimes you know what i'm saying you might have to throw down with some people but that's okay that's a part that's a part of the work uh so as you're as you're doing the work more is being revealed to you about your mo your own divine self and the power of your own divine self you're drawing on pristine energy pristine energy that's endless that's that has no boundaries that's that's bountiful and so you're starting to realize that the aspects of Ahura Mazda and the Amesha Spentas are nothing more than your own divine self. They're templated energies to keep you locked down here on the physical mundane plane. But as you're working through them, you're releasing that energy and you're devouring it and you're drawing it back into yourself and you're destroying the concept of what Ahura Mazda and the Amesha Spentas represent on the mundane planning you're taking that power back and you're utilizing it for yourself so uh it's it's a very powerful grimoire you know there's tons more that i could say about it but I, I recommend it to anybody who want who wants to get into a deeper aspect of the self and who wants to know themselves from a soul perspective and wants to deal with true persian black magic from my perspective or at least an aspect of true persian black magic and sorcery from my aspect, I recommend it. Get your hands on it. Uh, you know, you can find it uh, from Become a Living God and, and check it out. Now, as you're doing the work, uh, just quickly, make sure that you're doing extra additional readings and stuff like that on, you know, uh, the material, the additional material to kind of mirror, mirror up and to draw in your own definitions of the work. So you can have a broader perspective and a more awakening experience of what you're dealing with here okay so yeah i wanted to push this video out i wanted to, to give my opinion on the black magic of ariman top notch and uh yeah i'll continue to to give my personal experiences of just different grimoire books that i've worked through uh the reactions and stuff um, you know, oh, and quickly, I'll just talk about my experiences quickly before I end the video. What I experienced was, you know, uh, uh, a true changing, man, a very dynamic changing in my life. Like everything seemed like it was just falling apart. Everything seemed like it was falling apart. Like shit was just happening. You know, I got into a car accident. Uh, uh, people were just going crazy. All kinds of shit, man. Uh, you know, I, I ran out of money. Like, things that I, I basically was holding on to uh, uh, was hitting me hard. You know, and, and I know why those things were coming up. But now that I'm, I'm through the work and I've, I've you know, rebalanced and, and re reorganized uh, and become wholesome again through remerging these aspects of my divine self i feel good but i'm glad that i went through it because a lot of the shit that came up that i was experiencing i didn't realize what i was holding on to you know what i mean i didn't realize that i was allowing distractions my own my own created distractions that's what you're dealing with your own created distractions in the form of ego in the form of what takes place and what looks like ohura mazda and the mesha spentas they're just templates right but i didn't realize what I was holding on to as distractions 
that was keeping me from my most divine path. And I thought that these things were like, you know, helping me out. I thought that these things were like, oh, okay, yeah, these are these are aspects that I need for my most divine self. They weren't. <laughs> As they were